Last week saw the start of the 2018 season for the Super League and Premier League clubs. This week, they were joined by the teams of League 1 and League 2. The big game was in Celtic Park, where Kesselbar Celtic took on Ballina Town. But it was in Carrowmore where this week's most entertaining game took place, as Manulla and Ballyglass fought out a 3-3 draw. Stay with us, we got the goals, the saves and the reaction from games right across the county. It was a very cagey first half display by both Ballina and Kesselbar, but the town broke the deadlock early in the second half thanks to a Jamie Cawley goal. Celtic's long unbeaten home league record was under threat, but Cullum Levin found the net to ensure his side earned a share of the spoils with just 10 minutes remaining. On Saturday evening, Ballyhain got their season off to a great start with a 2 0 win away at Clemoris who are still looking for their first points of the season. Ballyhane's young side came away with the points thanks to two second half goals from Shea Benson and Keir Lyons. Straight of Foxford United extended a big welcome to neighbours Kuchiman Knock United as they made their Super League debut. It was the visitors that led 1-0 at the break as Liam Grok scored their first ever top division goal. And for the second game in a row, Straight of Foxford into the second half a goal down. But they turned it around once again thanks to goals from John Durkin who got two, Daniel Gorman and Johnny Kokosa. The second big derby game took place in Carrowmore as Ballyglass made a short journey to take on their near neighbours Manulla and both sides played their part in a thrilling 3-3 draw. Manulla were 2-0 up after 40 minutes as Lucas DePaula scored both goals for Connie Morrison's side but Ballyglass pulled a goal back just before half time thanks to a superb free kick from Keelan McDonald. Ballyglass came out fighting in the second half and within 20 minutes they found themselves in front as the ever-reliable J.P. O'Gorman scored twice and there only looked like one winner at this stage. Ballyglass came within minutes of picking up a point away to Westport last weekend and they were hit right at the death once again as Manola grabbed a valuable point when Johnny Burke headed a late equaliser to deny Tom Connolly's side once again. So we were disappointed. Um, we got off to a slow start, conceded two sloppy goals from our point of view, but we never doubted that we had it in us to, to come back and, and certainly try and win the game. Um, we got we dropped back to two all, and we, we got a, a, the third and just last five minutes just switched off. And uh, yeah, it's a disappointed uh, dressing room at the moment. It feels like a defeat to be honest. You know, was we're lucky to get a point out of the, out of the game. We went two 0 up and. Got a bit complacent, they came, they came back into it, took the lead. I suppose we let them back into it really, we gave away a lot of ball and got, they, they got growing confidence as the game went on and we, 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 we kind of sat back a bit and invited them onto it. So as the game went on, they got stronger and stronger. So I was proud of the lads in the end, like they held, they held, they held the nerves and they kept going and kept going forward. And uh, we got the equaliser in the end, but it was a great performance from both teams. And I say we, we were sloppy into the end defence, gave away three silly goals, um, and we have to stop saying this. Two last week, three today. It's, it's not good enough. Um, I thought it was a, a great game, um, great game, a great derby match. It had everything, and um, six goals. But unfortunately, we, we, we just go away with one point. But at least look at it. We take the positives. We move on. We're, we're on the board, and um, as I say, we, we pick ourselves up and move on next Tuesday. Westport United picked up their second win of the season as they put six past Eris Aintheha. Peter Corcoran opened the scoring early on with what was probably the goal of the game. Mikey O'Brien and Brandon Scahill added further goals before the break. Scahill made it 4-0 inside the first 10 minutes of the second half before substitutes Adam Mulcrone and Jasper Frisch put the game well out of the reach of Eris. Jason Boylan was on the mark for Eris. It was an excellent performance from the lads today. It really was from start to finish. Built on last week's performance and result. Uh, tough first half, we moved the ball really, really well. And, uh, I thought Dave Cam was excellent in the middle of the park, switching the play, and we got great width from our full backs and, and wide players. Um, Brandon Scal was excellent up front for us. I thought he uh, showed for the ball, linked it in well, uh, took his goal, excellent, the, the third goal in the first half. Um, really pleased coming in at half time with the lads, but second half, I think we started the game slow and fairness to errors. They pushed bodies forward and tried to get a goal back. Did it cause us um, a couple of problems, but the lads took to the game plan and, and 
fairness to our tacklers today, they were really, really good and scored six goals is lovely, especially for the, the fans coming down for our first home game. It's nice to, to show what, what we're about. Yeah, we're delighted with the three points. Um, it's good to get six points off the mark. We are delighted with two goals as well. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good performance. We're a bit disappointed with the goal we conceded, but I mean, six goals isn't bad and I think we deserved it. Well, Swinford continued their winning streak and they continue to score for fun in a 4-1 win over Con Rangers. Swinford took the lead through Joe Slevin, but the sides went in-level at the break as Owen Prendergast scored Con Rangers' first goal of the season. Just like last weekend, Swinford performed much better in the second half and Paddy O'Donnell had them back in front in the 67th minute before Dara Price and Niall Price ensured the three points for Liam Foy's side with further goals in the 76th and 79th minutes. Yeah, it's light now, the boys are uh, dug deep today. Grind out the win. We won all there for the first half, but uh, the dug deep second half again, yeah. Uh, won all at, at, at half time, you, you took the lead and then uh, Con Rangers came back, but you kind of ran away with it there in the second half. Yeah, we did the same last week. We went 1 0 up and then 1 all, but the boys are starting to fight and dig deep, and the young lads are maturing very well this year. And a lot of pace in the counter attack today. Yeah, uh, we have pace, pace, yeah. Up front, there's a lot of pace, and the boys in the field find the balls brilliantly. There was another 3 3 thriller in the Premier League as Ackle Rovers kicked off their season by picking up a point away to Snugborough United. Ackle took the lead on 25 minutes. Brandon McGing brought down in the box and Kevin Lynch converted from the spot, scoring in his 18th consecutive season. But Snugborough didn't take long to equalise through Norbert Carroll and before half time Alan Lyons added a second to put the home side ahead. Ackle responded well as Brandon McGing levelled matters once again less than 10 minutes into the second half. Following some great work by Mark Davitt. The scoring was to continue as Sean Curry made it 3-2 to Snugborough before the final goal of the game came in the dying minutes as Snugborough scored an unfortunate own goal to ensure both sides shared the points. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you lose a goal in the last few minutes, you're always going to be disappointed. Uh, good game, a good tough game against Sackle. Uh, yeah, you know, you're going to be disappointed when you lose when you lose a goal in the last minute, but uh, fair play to them, good. Uh, Good contest between the two teams, and uh, hopefully, we'll, yeah. An entertaining game as well with the, the leads changing, changing sides. Yeah, yeah. So it changed, yeah, and, and two penalties thrown in as well. So yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, it was a tough game, and two good sides going at it. And you know, fair play to the lads. They dug it out there. We were three two down going into the last few minutes, and uh, we're very happy to come away. We started pretty well. We took the lead through a penalty, and unfortunately. Uh, we didn't hang on to it for too long, but uh, they went 2-1 up and it ebbed and flowed. But it was a you know, really good game and uh, their quality side, they'll be there, they're about to come in. Yeah, overall we played played pretty well. Um, you know, Kevin Lynch came back today and he was, he was outstanding really. Uh, Mark Davis, John Joyce, Michael English. So yeah, even Sean Scott in goal pulled off a, a crucial stay, uh, save at, at 3-2 to keep us in the game. Ballyhonest Town laid down another marker in the Premier League as they put seven past Westport United B. After their big win over Bangor Hibs in their opening game, they once again showed their attacking intent at Solo 21 Park with goals from Kyle Kearney, Dio Addicts, Keith Robinson and Gary Higgins. Tommy Page aside looks like early season promotion favourites, but they know it's still very early in the season and they have a tough trip to Ackle ahead of them next weekend. Uh, happy with six points now at the moment, yeah. Two, t two tough games, but we were prepared well, so we were, like, you know, and uh, we learned about the other teams and um, we came out here fighting and everything the whole lot. So, I mean, it was it was um, two emphatic wins, but going forward, we have to keep an eye on big results, but we have to just be careful. The second game at Solar 21 Park on Saturday saw Fahy Rovers and Glynis Rovers each come away with a share of the spoils. After a tense opening half into goalless, Fahey finally broke the deadlock with 15 minutes remaining thanks to an acrobatic goal from Darren Creeby, who was first to react as Glyn Hest failed to clear a corner. Glyn Hest to the credit kept plugging away and with the final attack levelled matters as Carl Chambers' free kick found its way into the back of the Fahey net via the crossbar. Well done Damien, a very tight affair and uh, the last kick of the game, you just got the point. Yeah, no, you couldn't get a nicer time score and equaliser, especially in a lo local derby against your neighbours. We'll 
played well in spells, like same with Fahey, a draw, probably a fair result at the end, at the end of the day I suppose. It probably was a fair result. Uh, um, Fahey, they, they took the lead, didn't have a lot of chances after that and it was, it was probably all Glen Hester after the... Well, they, well, by looking at the game there, they sat back a bit and hoped to, to find out the one in the lead, but we got, we got, I thought we'd get a chance, at least one or two chances and we took one of them eventually. Uh, the lads did well, they worked really hard, the work rate was fantastic, we took the lead, Delighted with that. It's just unfortunately we conceded the last kick of the game. Fantastic free kick. Goalie couldn't do that in the it, but say la vie, that's football. A derby match, a full blooded affair. Yeah, yeah, no, it was full blooded. Everyone gave 100%, so we were, you know, that's the way these derbies go, and it wasn't, there was nothing ill ill mannered or anything in the game, so it was fine. It was grand. It was a good game of football. Banker Hibbs had their goalkeeper, Pat McHale, to thank as they picked up their first points of the season after a hard-fought 2-1 win over Ballyglasby in Ballybeg Park. Brian McHale had Hibbs in front midway through the first half with a great finish from a tight angle. Ballyglass were levelled just five minutes later through Dara McNamara. Just before half-time, Hibbs were back in front as Brian McHale played a great through ball to the excellent Cahill Doherty and he calmly finished past Nathan Prendergast. But it was McHale's save that was the game's talking point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, imperative we got a first home game. Badly needed. I think it's a very important three points for us. Equally, I'd say they'd be very disappointed if they didn't come away with anything. They had a, I feel the man beside me here, very modest individual with a great penalty save, and uh, only for him the outcome could have been very different. Yeah, Pat, it was a good save. What was going through your mind there as you pushed that one past oh, the post? I was, I was trying to give him the eyes. So I gave him to him and I saved it in there. It was a good penalty all the same. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually he did find the corner very well and only for Pat like I say it was it was the difference in the day and that's you know a quality player that's that's the difference it makes. Yeah, tough game. I mean we were probably unlucky we had a penalty saved. Uh, there wasn't many chances between us other than the goals, so I suppose we would have been happy with a draw and we probably think we deserved a draw. But that's just the way it is at the start of the season, you're trying to find your feet and when things go don't go far yet, it invariably means a defeat. Okay. It was a hard start for us away from home. We, we we said that when we see the fixtures, but we've two of the harder fixtures away from home. Albeit we didn't get any points, but we have them out of the way now, and we're still finding our feet with lads coming and going and training and lads injured and that. So, I suppose we'd like to have points on the board, but at, with two with two away fixtures out of the way. Ballina Town began their season with a 2-1 win away to Kalala in the big local derby in League One in what was a fiercely competitive game. Jason Muldoon and Shane Divers were on the score sheet for Ballina and Aaron O'Boyle hit the lone reply for Kalala. Kalala also in a second goal ruled out as Ballina held out to take all three points. The two sides that promoted from League Two last year met in the opening game of the 2018 season as Kesselbar Celtic B made the journey to Drum to take on Kilmore. Kilmore couldn't have asked for a better start as they hit six goals against their nemesis from last season. Michael Boyle's side relied on Sean Brogan for goals last season, but there was no such problems on Saturday as they had six different goal scorers, with goals coming from Niall Cawley, Liam Murphy, Jamie Flannery, Sean Brogan, Darren Keane and Shane Kennedy. The only game in League One on Sunday afternoon was in Partry, as Mulrani United got their season off to the perfect start with a 1-0 win against the home side. Partry can count themselves a little unlucky, as player manager Adrian McManaman scored the only goal of the game. Mossilali's Manulla B proved too strong for Cross Malina as they got their season off to the perfect start with a 2-0 win over Derek Graham's side in Caramore. Shane Durkin proved the match winner and his second half brace was enough to secure all three points for the home side. In the Killeen Sports Ground League 2, Hollister continued where they left off last season as they started their season with a thrilling 3-2 win over Balavari Blue Bombers and Ballina United made a winning return to Mayo League football with a 1-0 win over Newport Borishoon. And finally, a look at the tables. In the Elvery Sports Super League, Westport United and Strait and Fox United the only two teams left with 100% records. Down at the bottom, Arisanthia and Clemaris both looking for their first wins as well as Kilchima and Knock United, although they have played one game less. In the Cascourt Hotel Premier League, Ballyhonest Town and Swinford topped the table on maximum points after two games, while at the other end, Ballyglass B, Westport United B and Con Rangers yet to register a point this season. Early days yet in League One, sponsored by the three store in Ballina. Kilmore, Ballina Town B, Manola B and Moran United all register wins to give them three points apiece. And in League One, sponsored by Killeen Sports Grounds, at the end of the first day of action, Ballina United and Hollister Top table on three points.
So that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. And if you want any more information, please follow us on Facebook or Twitter or look up our website, www.mayofootballleague.com.